So, seconds out, delighted to be joined by Katarina Tanders, the WBC interim super featherweight champion of the world. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing very well, and you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Yeah. Are you back home in Norway? Are you in Spain at the moment? Where are you? At the moment, um, I'm in Spain. That's where I have my trainers and I have my, well, it, it's the place where I normally train <laughs> for the fights. And give us an idea of the current situation in Spain in terms of restrictions and, and things like that. Well, it has been quite strict, so it has been a quite difficult uh, time, uh, especially for for the one that, for us that are training and all that kind of things. Um, so we're actually starting to go to the gym now, but during more than two months, we were not we were not allowed to go out to the streets. I mean, we could go to to buy some food. Uh, we could go to the pharmacy and do like basic and and essential things. But I mean, there were police all over the place, and uh, yeah, I, I was like stopped twice or three times a day. <laughs> were you able so, to do uh, much um, training while that period was going on? Did you have facilities at home that you could use? Yes, luckily I. I I got a lot of things in my house, like a static um, bicycle. And yeah, I, I trained every day. I also got a boxing bag. So, of course, I was not allowed to go out running. But <laughs> I tried to do other things to keep my cardio up and, and keep, yeah, keep um, a good physical uh, state. <laughs> Have you had any indication of when you might be able to return to competitive boxing and where that might be, which country might be first to bring something back that you could be involved in? Uh, I'm not really sure. I have heard a lot of different things, um, but I hope that I maybe can return in September. But of course, everything depends on, on uh, yeah, if it's possible to organize events, if not. And I will just wait until Sauerland tells me uh, something more specific about it but um hopefully I, I think we could return in september <laughs> tell us taking you back a bit further just tell us a little bit about how you first got into boxing because you didn't turn pro until you were 27 is that right yeah that's right that's right um well actually i started with kickboxing first when i was 18 years old and um i didn't do a lot of amateur fights so after like five or six amateur fights I went over to to professional kickboxing and I kept on competing in kickboxing to 2012 and then I decided to to start only with boxing um, and because I was living in in Spain and I didn't have a uh, Spanish uh, nationality it was very difficult for me to to get amateur fights in boxing so uh, during four years, from 2012 to 2016, I think I had like two amateur fights a year, which is almost nothing. Um, and that's why I decided to turn professional in 2016, because um, I was not really able to develop my boxing within the amateurs, because I didn't have a lot of fights. Um, and I think that's the best decision that I that I ever took. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I turned professional in 2016. So you won the European title, of course, and you picked up the WBC interim belt in November. Just want to get an insight right. from you. Probably better off myself asking this question to the WBC, but I just want to get an idea of why the interim title became vacant because I know it was defended in August and then it was defended, the full title, sorry, was defended in August and then again in uh, February this year. So why was there a vacancy for an interim champion? Well, I know that the previous, um, the previous girl that had this belt was Elham Mekaled. And um, I actually thought I was going to, to fight with her in November. But I'm not really sure why, why it didn't happen with her. Uh, but I think she was um, 
changing her team at that moment. She changed her trainer and her boxing coach. And I think it was not a good moment for her maybe to defend it with me. So I know that she left it vacant. And um, then I, I fought for the belt against Daniela Ramos. What is your understanding of where that puts you in the rankings, if you like, for the full title, which is held at the moment by Terry Harper, of course? Are you? Do you understand that you're mandatory? Because you don't have a ranking because you have an interim title. Exactly. <laughs> well, that's what I have been told from the start, uh, that I should be the official uh, challenger to, to meet Terry Harper. So I really hope that I can get that chance really soon. Uh, we, we were really close to to get that fight for the 24th of April, but I think um, the television wanted uh, wanted Terry Harper to to face another British boxer, which which is Natasha Jonas. So actually, in, in the last moment, uh, we got to know that we we didn't get the chance anyway, which was a big disappointment for me. Um, but yeah, I, I really hope that I can fight her sooner or later. Um, I know that Michaela Mayer is really behind that fight, and she yeah. she talks like it's almost um, well, she's almost like claiming that the fight. <laughs> but I, I think that being the interim champion, I, I should get the chance first. So uh, let's see what the WBC uh, tells us. <laughs> What, what do you make of um, Terry Harper from what you've seen of her? And, and do you feel that she'll um, defeat Natasha Jonas when it's rescheduled? Yeah, I do think so. I think that Terry Harper is a stronger boxer physically. And um, I mean, I mean, I think Natasha Jonas is a great boxer as well. She has really good movements. And, and when you see her box, you can really see that she has experience. But I just think that Terry Harper is way too strong for her. So um, it wouldn't surprise me if she wins before the limit with Natasha Jonas. And um, also the fight that she did with Vivian Obanoff. Uh, she lost her belt against Vivian Obanoff, and uh, I think Terry Harper did a great uh, fight against Vivian Obanoff. So it doesn't necessarily uh, need to say anything, but I mean, <laughs> I, I think she would win quite easily. And what about yourself against Terry Harper? What what are the areas where you feel you have an advantage? Well, the thing uh, with Terry Harper and me, I think it could be really interesting because I think it would be the first time for Terry Harper to meet another strong boxer because I'm also quite big for, for the super featherweight and I, I, I think that's also her case. So, of course, we have to drop uh, quite many kilos to, <laughs> to be in the super featherweight. We're both, I think we're the same. Um, I think we are. We have the same, um, how do you say it in English? Um, hey, um, oh. <laughs> how do you say we are? She's as tall as me, you know, okay. height, yeah, height, yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I think it could be a very interesting fight, and I, I, I look at myself as a very strong fighter, uh, and I think I'm very good in the inside. And I think she has to to get a little bit better on the inside. So um, I think it could be very interesting. And would you be happy to come over to the UK for that fight? Should it take place? Yes, I would, of course, go to the UK. And I mean, um, I don't really see that we have the chance to do the fight in another place anyway. So I'm, I'm prepared mentally uh, for the fact that I have to go to the UK. <laughs> And what sort of things do you get up to outside the ring, just for people that are interested? What, what do you do in your spare time? Well, I don't imagine you have a lot of spare time, but what do you do when you have? No, actually, I well, I train twice a day and we train quite hard. So when I'm preparing for a fight, I have, the only thing I, you, you want to do is to go home, relax and uh, be as good as you can for the next session. But... Uh, like now, for instance, uh, I try to be a little bit more social and meet friends and uh, 
yeah, I like to read a lot. I like to go to the cinema. Um, I like to to walk in the mountains, for example. <laughs> so I do that kind of things. I, well, I play the piano as well a little bit. <laughs> really? Do you, do you yeah. have one there at home? I have it in the um, in the business of my father. <laughs> okay, nice. Um, just yeah. before we let you go, what's your um, main social media handle so people can follow you and find out more about you? I use mostly the Instagram, I would say. Yeah. Is a little bit on Facebook, but I, I don't do a lot of updating on the Facebook as much as I do on the Instagram. So that's where I post my training sessions and yeah. <laughs> and is it just your name to find you? It's just, yeah, just my name. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, I really appreciate your time. And um, okay, thank I hope you. we Thanks get to see you me. compete in the UK soon. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll stay safe okay. and we'll see you soon. See you soon. Yeah. Have a nice day. Thank you. Take care.